Okay, so at some point in your time as a guitar player, you're gonna start to develop bad habits in your playing. Oftentimes, these will set in early on in your time learning guitar, when you first start to pick up the instrument, especially if you are self-taught like I was, you don't have anyone telling you how to play things, how to pick things, how to voice chords in the left hand. I mean, the range of bad habits that you can develop is uh, is pretty huge. Now, the reality is most of us find ways of working around these issues or just flat out ignoring them. But I don't want to do that anymore. I want to face some of these bad habits that I have in my playing head on. So in today's video, I'm going to show you five bad playing habits that I need to break. Now, I've let these issues go on in my playing for too long. I've made all kinds of excuses about why I don't need to face them or I don't have the time to face them. Under normal circumstances, I get to travel and gig and tour quite a bit. And when I'm not on the road, I'm home making YouTube videos. But given the current circumstances, all of my gigs and all of my tours have been either postponed or just canceled through the rest of the year. So I have all the time in the world. Now, on my whiteboard over here, I've written down five bad habits that I have in my playing that I think a lot of you might also have. So we're gonna talk about what they are and some different ways of getting past them. But first, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name's Rhett Scholl, I make new videos every week. Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Also, I just released a brand new impulse response pack for all of you Helix users, Kemper users, Axe Effects, Iridium. These are my cabinets that I mic'd up with my microphones here in my home studio. These are how I record my guitar sounds at home. So check those out in the link down below. You can also find links to the tone course and the green room down there if you're interested. With all that out of the way, let's jump into the first bad habit. So the first and probably most glaring bad habit that I have is noodling. And I would bet that most of you watching this video also have the same bad habit. However, if you're not familiar with what I mean by noodling, it's this. Or this. Or this. Noodling is simply the act of playing, but playing nothing. You're not playing anything musical, you're not playing really anything in time, and you're not even really thinking about what you're playing. And if you're like me, you get sick of hearing yourself play the same cliche lines and chord shapes and little progressions over and over and over again. Now, this was really brought into focus for me a few weeks ago when I started watching Tom Bukovac's videos on YouTube. Now, if you don't know who Tom Bukovac is, he is an incredibly accomplished Nashville session guitarist, and he's one of my favorite current guitar players out there. I've known about Tom's playing and his work for years, and he's one of the guys that I really look up to as a guitar player and a musician, partially because he never noodles. If you watch any of his videos, which I highly recommend, by the way, you'll notice that every time he sits down to play, he's playing something musical. He's playing something that has a complete musical idea. There are complete musical phrases and statements. Even if it's just a couple of chord voicings he's messing around with, he stitches them together to make a complete chord progression. Or if he's noodling around on a lick, he'll combine his lick with different chord voicings to basically bring your ear into hearing a complete musical phrase. Tom also has some of the best touch and guitar tone out of any guitar player alive today. I mean, seriously, every single time I watch one of his videos, which is pretty much filmed on an iPhone, I believe, it sounds incredible. He's just sitting in his garage talking to a smartphone, but it's still some of the best guitar tone I've ever heard. So how do we stop the noodling? I think the first thing to do is to recognize when it's happening and just immediately stop playing. Anytime you start to go to those old cliche lines that you've played a hundred times before, just stop playing. Then take the idea or the riff or the lick that you were just playing and maybe find a chord shape based around it and then put it in time. That's one of the worst things about noodling is you're never really playing in time. So take that initial idea 
and stick a few chords together, no matter how simple or basic they may be. And instantly we've gone from noodling to now playing at least a basic musical idea. But I think the most important thing to remember is to recognize when you're noodling and just stop. The next bad habit that I really need to work on is using too much reverb. Now, I love reverb, but it's come to my attention over the last several weeks that I probably use too much reverb in my everyday playing and also in my live playing. I'll give you an example. This is one of my Kemper presets. And last time I pulled up this particular preset, I made some changes to it that I really liked. And uh, well, this is what it sounds like. Now it sounds good, but there's obviously a lot of reverb on that patch. Now, using effects when you're playing is not inherently bad. In fact, it's one of my favorite parts of being a guitar player is using effects to shape your tone and to find new parts and new ways of playing the instrument. But if you're not careful, it can get away from you and you can start to rely on these effects so much, in fact, that when they're stripped away, you feel like you're playing naked. Like you can't actually play your guitar unless you have that nice lush bed of reverb underneath you. Now I don't always play with this ridiculous amount of ambient reverb. But I do always play with at least some kind of reverb on my amp or model or whatever I happen to be using at the time. Now, several weeks ago, I had the opportunity to interview Tomo Fujita for my podcast, and it was an incredible conversation. If you don't know who Tomo Fujita is, you should check out the episode. I'll have it linked down below. But Tomo told me that when he practices at home, he never uses any reverb, none. And this is deliberate because he knows that he likes the way it sounds. He likes the way it feels so much so that he'll start to rely on having that reverb to possibly cover up some mistakes or some shortcomings in his playing. And when he told me that, it was like he was reading my mail. I do that all the time. My effect of choice is using reverb as a mask, as a crutch to sort of mask over any slight imperfections or shortcomings in my playing. Now for you, this may be a different type of effect. Maybe it's overdrive or a compressor or delay, but something that you're using to sort of cover up your playing. So what I'm gonna start doing is turning off my reverbs and practicing dry. See, even right there, that feels a little unnatural, which tells me that this is something I need to start working on. So the next bad habit that I need to address in my playing has to do with my right hand. And this is a really common thing that I see a lot of guitar players doing. And that is taking the base of your hand and anchoring it against the bridge of the guitar. Now, sometimes you need to anchor your wrist so that you can palm mute. <laughs> But the way I play guitar, I always end up leaving my wrist anchored against the base of the guitar here. And I switched to my Strat so that I could show you. I've actually worn off most of the gold plating around the bridge and the saddles and these pick guard screws here because every time I play, this is where my hand lives. And all of my guitars that I've had for more than a few years have the plating eaten away because of the oils and acids in my skin. It's not good. Now, anchoring your hand against the bridge isn't a deal breaker. Most of us that do it have learned how to play with that technique in mind. That's one of those habits I was talking about earlier that we've been able to work around. But the reality is it's more of a limitation. When the base of your hand is anchored against the bridge, it's limiting your movement. It's limiting the ability for you to attack the string in different ways and to move more freely up and down the string in terms of closer to the bridge or closer to the neck, giving you different tones. Now, the fact is most great guitar players that I know play with their right hand or their picking hand floating above the strings rather than anchored with the base of their palm on the bridge. 
Now, this isn't the case across the board. There are plenty of great guitar players that play differently than that, but allowing your hand to float above the strings is actually gonna give you more control. You're gonna be able to pick more cleanly, you'll be able to pick more accurately and with more dynamic control than you have with your hand resting against the bridge. Now, I was made aware of this issue a few years ago when I was actually taking guitar lessons from a really good friend of mine named Ben Forehand. Ben is one of the best guitar players I've ever known, and he has great picking dynamic and picking feel. And part of that is because he floats his right hand above the strings rather than anchoring his hand to the bridge. I think one of the best things to do is to take licks and riff ideas or chords or solos that you're already familiar with and work on them with the right hand floating above the strings. Start slow and focus on pick accuracy and note accuracy. <laughs> You don't wanna be hitting the wrong strings or fretting notes out or anything like that. So start slow. And then slowly work up your speed and your dynamic control. Practice picking soft. And practice digging in. And then over time, your speed and your accuracy will start to progress. Now you can always put your hand back on the bridge when you need to but you don't wanna to have to live there. You don't wanna be relegated to leaving your hand there at all times. Now, my fourth bad habit is something that I have struggled with more recently, and that is relying on muscle memory rather than relying on my ear when I'm playing. This is something that I find personally happens a lot when I'm playing live. If I have to take a solo, for example, when you're on stage, a lot of times it can be a somewhat stressful environment. You are in front of people, you are performing, depending on how prepared or unprepared you are for the music, it can be a really engaging, fun and comfortable experience, or it can feel like you're holding on for dear life. Now, I've found that if I'm playing in a somewhat stressful situation, I tend to rely more on my muscle memory to play licks and ideas that I might have repeated thousands and thousands of times. And you may have noticed this on some of my videos. I tend to gravitate towards a lot of the same type of licks. We'll get to that in a second, though. Now, you might notice this issue in your own playing if you start to jam or play with other people, especially if you aren't that experienced in playing with other people yet. You might be a little nervous. You might not have a firm grasp of what's going on musically. And so your tendency might be to revert back to muscle memory rather than to listen to what you're playing and how it fits in the context of the music that's happening around you. Now, for me, the way I'm going to address this is by practicing improvising. This is something I haven't done a lot of, especially recently, but sitting down and either looping a chord progression or putting a track together or looking up a jam track video on YouTube and sitting there and practicing improvising without stopping, without trying to repeat ideas, but sitting and trying to come up with unique ideas by listening rather than going off of muscle memory. To do that, you need to start slowly and start with a simple progression. Start with something that you're comfortable with, maybe a blues progression or a simple modal progression, something that you know and you're familiar with the scale shapes on the guitar and start at a relatively slow tempo. Start by listening for melodic ideas that you can play off of, something that might have happened in one of the other instruments in the track, for example, rather than just relying on the same licks that you've played a thousand times. <laughs> That is one of my cliche muscle memory licks. I've played it so many times, I'm sick and tired of hearing it. So when it comes to these improvisation sessions, I'm gonna actively avoid playing that lick. And the fifth and final bad habit that I specifically need to fix is playing the same things over and over and over again. This is solos and riffs and songs that I learned years ago and have just never replaced, never moved on from. The most overused example that I have from this YouTube channel is the solo from Robin Ford's song, Help the Poor. It 
it's a great solo. And there's a lot of things that I learned from transcribing that solo that I've been able to implement into my own playing. But I, for some reason, haven't moved on. I play it so many times. I play these licks over and over again. I can't tell you how many times that particular lick has shown up on this YouTube channel and it needs to stop. Now, fortunately, the way to fix this bad habit is actually pretty simple. Just learn some new stuff. Transcribe some new solos, learn some new songs, play things that are gonna break you out of that rut. Recently, a friend of mine up in Nashville told me the way he practices is by simply going down into his basement home studio every morning and listening to songs. He listens to songs with a guitar in his hand and just plays along with them. He listens and transcribes the parts in real time and maybe tries to learn one of the solos or just simply learn the parts that are going on in the song. And to me, that's one of the best ways to practice. You're introducing new ideas and new playing styles and concepts to your own repertoire in real time, all while listening and learning from cool musicians. I think it's great. So that's what I'm going to focus on over the next few weeks, coming down here in the morning before turning on the camera or answering emails or doing any admin stuff. I'm going to sit down and play my guitar, I'm going to listen to music and work on these five bad habits. So I've got some work to do. Maybe I'll post an update video in the next few weeks to let you know how these issues are coming along. Let me know what bad habits you have in your playing that you need to fix in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Again, be sure to check the links out in the description box down below if you wanna support the channel. There's also some affiliate links down there with some of the gear that I use to make these videos. Also follow me on Instagram, at Rhett Shull. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. It really does mean the world to me. I really appreciate the support, uh, especially in the current times. It, it really is very cool to have you guys engaged in watching. So huge thank you to you. Anyways, I'm Rhett Shull. Thanks for watching. And remember, there is no plan B.